Let's move in on that target! Get in there! Red Orchestra 3? Well, no, that's definitely not gonna happen anytime soon, especially considering Tripwire is currently developing the Cold War game 83. However, something extremely rare within modding is going on here, whereas Tripwire themselves are supplying these guys with a lot of materials and assets directly from an abandoned Red Orchestra 2 to Rising Storm 2 conversion. So, brand new game? No. If you ask me, it's somewhat even better, because essentially, we will be getting pretty much brand new content, except it'll be absolutely free. Now, if this doesn't make sense, I'll make sure it does before the video's over. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Milsim Tax Shooter and Historic Gaming Channel. Today, we have none other than another episode in the Tactical Gaming Journal series, where we will be going over Red Orchestra 3. Well, not exactly. That's probably something we're not going to see for a very long time, but this is definitely the next best thing. This here is a mod for Rising Storm 2, taking things back to World War II, and more specifically, North Africa. But what makes this mod different from every other mod is the fact that many of its assets and materials will be coming directly from the Tripwire devs themselves. Now some of you know this and some of you don't, but Tripwire was planning on taking everything from Red Orchestra 2 and converting it over to the newer engine of Rising Storm 2. Now that never happened for what reasons I don't know, but at least something is coming out of it and it's not all just disappearing and never to be seen. As the Tripwire devs will be taking the graphical assets that they did create and handing them over to the Desert Rats modding team. So we're talking weapon models, vehicle models, I'm sure some sounds. So while this surely isn't an official Red Orchestra 3, it most definitely is the next best thing. And in my eyes, being that it's free to everyone who already owns Rising Storm 2, it's kind of like a sore dick. You can't beat it. Here we have some screens from the team's first map, El Hama, set in Tunisia, 1943. Uh, real fast, just a little personal disclaimer, for lack of a better word. Any of these locations or nomenclature for any of the weapons or anything like that, I'm probably going to get a bunch of them wrong, just to let you know right now. now. You can go ahead and let me know in the comments. Just know I'm no professional linguist. So before I tick anybody off, just know I'm probably going to get some of these words wrong. So here we have the classes that are playing for the North African campaign. I'm pretty sure these go for both sides, allied or access. Sniper, assault, machine gun, pioneer, your radio men, your regular rifleman class, and of course, your commander class. Speaking of commander, just like in the games that came before, the commanders will have these abilities. Now, the allied abilities differ slightly from the access abilities, but for the most part, and more or less for balancing, they relatively do the same thing. Kind of like the access get the rocket barrage, you put the allied ability will be coming from a naval ship. But generally speaking, the ability itself will pretty much be the same thing. A barrage of rockets flying in from out of the map and hailing down onto your men, killing anybody that has no cover above them. Now hopefully it'll be like postscriptum to where you can get into cover and survive an artillery or rocket barrage, 
However, a Stuka dive bomb or any kind of bomb will penetrate through overhead cover. Now, I love that about Postscriptum. Hopefully, they will do the same thing in this modification. Now, here we have three different variants of the Jukers. Now, I don't know exactly what their role will be. I would imagine maybe a gun run, even recon, or they could be dropping bombs themselves. That I don't know, but the models are beautiful. Now, speaking of beautiful, these next screens are nothing but. Starting out with the Vickers Heavy Machine Gun, one of my favorite scout cars or armored reconnaissance vehicle, the 222. And then finally, the Pattern 1937 webbing models for the Commonwealth. So we can expect British faction and I believe Anzac, Australian. Here we have another promo screen. I might as well show you guys. I want to leave it out. Beautiful art, the little flag montage on the tank in the background. And here we have a Valentine tank in motion. Now I'm sure this is an early animation, but you can see the wheels and track at work as it navigates the harsh desert terrain. Now, like I said before, a lot of these graphical assets come from the abandoned RO2 to RS2 conversion, now, which are which I haven't a clue, but here are some beautiful weapon models. The SMLE, the Beretta 34, and the Beretta 38 all in the middle of a reload. Here's the new user interface concept. Here you'll be able to pick which faction to fight for. You can see in the middle a little description of the game mode territories. The map they're on is El Alamein. While we're at it, let's go ahead and see some screens of this new map. There's the famous airfield up in the top in the north of the map. Capture point F, clearly the last point you gotta capture. Now just briefly looking at these screens, you will start to notice that this is a flat, barren landscape. Now I'm no expert general or anything, but I guarantee you, the team with the best communication and cohesion is going to be the victor on this map, as strategic troop movement and coordination will surely decide the victor. Eh, along with some pretty awesome marksmanship with the bolt action rifles and of course marksmen snipers surely your metal will be tested as you'll go for 500 plus meter shots historically they said the desert was most brutal for infantry now armored units on the other hand this was their playground we're gonna get to see a lot of tanks we haven't seen in other theaters for instance kind of like the valentine we just looked at the crusader we have North Africa coming to postscriptum here soon too. Wonderful time to be a World War II buff, eh? The Battle of Majez El Bab fought in northern Tunisia, about 35 miles west of Tunis, on the 24th to 26th of November 1942. It was an Allied attack on the town of Majez that resulted in a withdrawal by the Axis forces. This action had strategic importance because the town of Majez sat astride a route that Allied armored units approaching from the west would have to take in order to advance on Tunis. This attack was carried out by elements of the British First Army. And now on to one of my favorite battles, or should I say siege, Tobruk. The siege of Tobruk lasted for 241 days in 1941. During early 1941, much of the western desert force was sent to Greek and Syrian campaigns. As German troops and Italian reinforcements reached Libya, only a skeleton allied force remained, short of equipment and supplies. Operation Sun and Bloom, between February and May of 1941, forced the allies into a retreat to the Egyptian border. A garrison consisting mostly of the 9th Australian Division remained at Tobruk to deny the port to the Axis. The occupation of Tobruk deprived the access of a supply port closer to the Egypt-Libya border than Benghazi. Erwin Rubble continued this siege as three different relief attempts were made. Operation Brevity, Battle Axe, and Crusader. However, on the 27th of November, Tobruk was finally relieved by the 8th Army, which controlled British and other Allied ground forces in the Western Desert from September 1941 in Operation Crusader. Here we have a customization sneak peek, for lack of a better word. Now I'm no savant or anything, but expect a lot of khakis. Khaki shorts, khaki pants, khaki capris. Yeah, you get the drift. Finally, to close this beautiful video out, we have an actual working timepiece. Yeah, that's right. This thing actually ticks and keeps legit time. Now I'd love to see them do some kind of customization thing, sort of like Zero Hour did. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. <laughs>
That was a pun by accident, I promise. Speaking of accidents, I totally forgot to tell you guys. If you're new around here, we give away a Steam key every week. And right now we have Beyond the Wire, Postscriptum, and Sprocket Tank Design game keys to give away. To enter the giveaway, all you gotta do is like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel of course, and join us on Discord, Boogie5 Gaming Etc. channel on Discord. Drop a comment on this video, or say whatever you want to say, but most importantly, leave your Discord name and number. That's going to work as your ticket stub if you do win. And speaking of winners, we have a winner for the week right now. Come on down, Mr. Skull Killer, also known on YouTube as Nudist Taylor. Nudist Taylor Skull Killer here is a Millsent member. That's right, he is a channel member. I believe this is the first Steam Key giveaway he's entered, and he's won it. Becoming a channel member not only gets you all these beautiful perks I talk about, but it gives you double the entries in every week's Steam Key giveaway. That's right, for as little as 99 cent or 25 cents a week, you get double the entries every single week. Congratulations, Skull Killer, Nudist Taylor. Hit me on Discord and I will get you your prize. Speaking of the Millsimp Minions, we have yet another member. I'd like everyone to welcome Mr. Aaron Carr to the ranks of the Millsimp Minions. Again, if you could put support the channel monetarily, it'd be greatly appreciated. For those of you that can, I completely understand. Just keep liking, commenting, it helps algorithm more than you know. Without any more further ado, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Of course, one more time, thank you for all the support. Thank you for viewing. Love you guys. Don't forget to check out Easy Company. If you're looking for a realism unit, they play Squad, Postscriptum, Hell Let Loose, all the big mill sims. And definitely check out their sponsor, G Portal. If you're looking for any kind of game servers from Minecraft to Arma, they are the source. And if you mention Easy, they will give you 5% off. Definitely check that out. If you're new to mill sims, check out my PS Guides playlist. It's in the playlist section of my channel. You can't miss it. It really would translate to any of the Milsim squad, Hell at Loose, Postscriptum. We are barreling towards 2,000 subscribers, man. I'm gonna thank you guys one last time. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Don't forget, in the time being, y'all be good to each other.